little bit on you know if Morgana was actually going to play support um, even with some of the bans coming through because yeah. traditionally Morgana is considered a good matchup actually into Thresh uh, because you can actually Black Shield that hook out. So uh, Golden Guardians has some flexibility still remaining in that comp. Will be Renekton blind up in the top lane, so Haunts are going to be having the ability to actually answer that. I do think that Golden Guardians are, are still lacking somewhat in the engage uh, as Ash really is their only tool right here. Uh, TSM on the gonna, other side has pretty good engage. I was going to ask you for Golden Guardians. It seems like it's a camp where you have to hit these skill shots. It's actually mm -hmm. kind of tough to get all that damage down. And if you miss, TSM is absolutely going to bash down the front door and just take everybody out of that comp. Yeah, yeah, I That's agree dangerous. completely. It, it is dangerous. I mean, you're, you're playing double marksman and, and two enchanters right now, right? Yeah, so, yeah. Um, they, they have pretty good wave clear, but What's you know the only pick? clear engage they have is, is actually the ash arrow right now. Mm -hmm. um, besides that, they would have to be absorbing the engages and kind of kiting back. They don't really have you know, an incredible answer for the side lane either. Um, I do think that Mordekaiser is a fine matchup into the Renekton, but right. I can't say I, I'm loving the, the, the Golden Guardians draft. I, I just think that it's like pretty narrow win conditions. Um, and it's going to rely pretty heavily on them getting ahead because if Golden Guardians is not ahead and able to just like force their will onto TSM at neutral yeah. objectives, then it's it's really hard to see how you like kind of come back with this comp. You know, if, if you're the first to the Dragon Pit and you're up in gold because you won your lanes and TSM has to come fight into you, then you can use you know the Ash, use the Graves, speed up with the Karma, you have the Black Shield and everything to absorb the engage from TSM and you kite back and you win the fight that way. But uh, it's very, very dependent on them winning early. I mean, they're putting themselves to the test, right? It's actually pretty cool to see. This is going to be pretty hard to execute for Golden Guardians. TSM looks like they just have that well-rounded comp. They want to get in there and start brawling. These teams have a pretty similar average game time, so I feel like they kind of peak in each lane accordingly when they have advantages and whatnot. So we'll see if that comes into play. Who can hit six first? If it is TSM, I'm sure Bjergsen's going to try to wreak havoc on the map. Uh, looking at a few other things for the game, if Golden Guardians can win this, it starts a nice consecutive streak for them. They have Evil Geniuses and Team Liquid coming up. Not the easiest next few mm -hmm. games. So all the momentum here would be fantastic for Golden Guardians. Yeah, I mean, it, it's obviously a, a really good point. You know, they do need to start picking up some of these wins. They, they drop games that they necessarily, you know, weren't expecting to right. early on in the split. You know, losing a couple games with Dragon Soul even. Uh, the late game has been the big struggle for Golden Guardians. They've shown themselves mm -hmm. capable of establishing early game leads, of, you know, having jungle dominance here with Closer. But they haven't always been able to actually turn that into a victory. And that especially is why this type of composition really concerns me for them. Because I can definitely see them, you know, getting an early lead. But if they're not able to actually close quickly, uh, it, it gets pretty dicey, I do feel like, in the later stages of the game, where Bjergsen's going to be in a side lane, going to be split pushing, you know, where you don't have that much engage, um, it, right. it can get pretty dicey. But I am excited to see, you know, this, this mid lane 1v1. Um, I do think Morgana is, is an exceptional pick into the Twisted Fade. And, you know, if you can shut down Bjergsen early, then hey, maybe nothing else really matters because and you I get do as well. enough We're gonna ahead. Yep, yep, should be a, a really exciting one uh, to start off this Saturday. TSM versus Golden Guardians, two teams on the up and up. TSM obviously, you know, having looked better throughout the season overall, but has had you know a couple of clunkers in, in, in some of their losses. So they really are striving for consistency. This is still a team that people have really, really high expectations for. People think that TSM at their peak should be able to compete with the very best in the league, and we have seen you know some evidence to actually support that. We have also seen you know some things on the other side of it clearly where you know they are struggling, where they all kind of uh, are falling back into some of the habits they they've had in the past that have, have really kind of plagued them. Them. You know, their their inability to to necessarily play on the same page. Sometimes, you know, drafting issues like we saw with uh, the Tank Fiddle 6 game actually against FlyQuest, you know, failing to actually look past their lanes mm -hmm. and more towards the team comp. Um, things like that, I think, have been getting a bit better, you know, considering last week. But uh, I, I'm liking their chances. Absolutely. And back on the attack, uh, I think both teams are really going to have to pull out all the stops here to get through this, especially if we see Golden Guardians getting ahead. Like I know we can harp on these comps, but we kind of do so because we haven't seen the execution from the basic comps that 
teams have been trying to run at the start of the summer split. So it, definitely going to have to dig down deep here. Not a lot of wheelhouse champions for Golden Guardians, but they could wow mm -hmm. us. And I think that's what the fans want to see as well. That's what the organization is has been kind of building up here. Yeah, I agree, right? You know, th they are trying to, you know, find something, th find mm -hmm. something extra, right? And that's why they they brought in Demonte. You know, why they are, are are trying to experiment with comps and trying to improve their drafts. Um, but this does feel like the the first time in in, in a couple of weeks where they are kind of moving a, a lot away from what it feels like they have learned. Um, you know, as I talked about, uh, hey, they've been focusing on a lot of split push. They've been focusing on you know semi globals and and hard engage and, and ways to actually start fights with the TF, with the Nocturne, with the Galio. They don't have any of those things yep. um so it, it, this is much more like a week one draft so i do think that they're gonna have to show us that it's you know not just about the evolution in, in what they're picking and the style that they're playing but they have to show the evolution in play now they have to show that you know we have actually improved from the earlier weeks where we Absolutely. could get leads but not close games um, because tsm has, has been far from flawless in the later stages of the game too i mean even just looking back last week i want to say it was against 100 thieves you know they, they established this huge early lead and then they had mistake after mistake people getting caught out you know messing up yep. setups around objectives and allowed Hunter Thieves back into the game in, in a game that should have actually been you know pretty one-sided, I think, for TSM. So uh, there are going to be opportunities for both squads, yeah. to be sure. And, for, and to the point of TSM in, in kind of controlling those games, that's what we used to see from them. That's what, you know, TSM and who they play soon, CLG, as we ha uh, as that used to be one of our big matchups, it, we knew them for being able to completely control a game. The, the 2v1 meta, where they would just sit there and basically stare you the single down at his <laughs> turret and then take him down. But you knew it was going to happen because they were just so mm -hmm. methodical. They're building that team again. They have double lift back. Maybe they need to revamp a little bit more with the strategies as we're seeing, but that's the goal they're going for again. So they're putting pressure on themselves, too, to bring that banner back yeah they, they really are and and i think the most interesting part about it is they've got a lot of the same pieces but then now they have to do it in a, in a different way right mm -hmm. you know you talked exactly. about 2v1s and kind of the old style and i think this is uh you know a similar problem that that tl is also going to be facing where both tl and tsm at their peak were very heavily you know late game centric like macro based team fighting type teams that would you know, know that they have really strong laners, know that the, their, their opponents are going to make mistakes, and mm -hmm. they just kind of sit back and outscale you, right? And then you make your one mistake, they win a team fight, they win the game. Now that's not really what we're seeing in League of Legends. Uh, we can kind of pause that as we are going to have an evade here. Uh, but TSM is stacked up, so not going to be too much uh, able to be getting done there. But, ooh, ooh. they actually can get caught here. Anybody want a flash? <laughs> Feels good to get a flash uh, mm -hmm. from Ash quite early, though. He does have Cleanse display safe in the lane and a Karma. So it may be a, a rinse and repeat here for bot side. It might be hard for Speak It to get in, though. Yeah, not bad at all. I mean, you're trading out the Ghost. That's a much shorter cooldown than the Flash, so you're mm -hmm. feeling pretty good about that. But, yeah, I mean, it's like when, when you look at the teams that are, are dominating in the past, you know, it's the TLs, the TSMs that played slow, that played around team fights, around objectives, outscaled you, out team fought you. And now you look at the a lot of the teams that are, you know, really dominating, well, and especially Cloud9, it's about aggression, it's about skirmishing, it's about snowballing objectives, and, you know, it's, it's a different style of play. So I do think that TSM and, and TL and some of the other teams in the league, too, are trying to find a balance between what they used to be and what they need to be now. And when they can do that, I think they're they're going to look really, really good. But that's, you know, a, a tough line to walk when you've been successful for so many years in just playing the game a very different way. See how they started up, how they set it for this time around. Golden Guardians trying to get a slight early push on the lane, or at least double lift and Biofrost are going to give it to them so they can get the long run down if they get Cosmic Radiance locks. It looks like junglers might meet on the same side of the map, too, as they go. Oh, no. So red buff was done by Speak of Sorry and stuff first. So they'll be on opposite sides. Could create something interesting to start off. Yeah. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see exactly, you know, how they do want to play it out. I, I think, you know, a lot of this is going to be playing around pushing lanes. Yep. You know, early on, Renekton is going to be getting the push. You can see Broken Blade going for a nice trade. But the passive from Mordekaiser is, is actually just so much damage that the trade ends up being pretty equalized. I do expect Amante to have the push on, on Bjergsen almost permanently. You know, especially as you get higher levels, you get more points into your W. Um, you can really knock down that wave incredibly fast. And... We, we do see that Demonte is also going for Glacial Augment, so it should be you know, Super Soaker, Spooky Ghosts, <laughs> all about the slowdown, the scouting, the engage with that. So uh, that is something, you know, we talked about them not having a lot of engage, but that can help to supplement that. You know, if you can actually land the Spooky Ghosts slow, 
uh, can make binding and things like that a lot more reliable. That's very true. You're hitting for hit confirm there pretty pretty good. Oh, we lost it. Smoke bomb take with the smite. And I'll just deny speaker really entering back into that fight. So that push from Demonte you were talking about allows closer to get in. Play a little game with Spika, and now Spika's out a bit of experience. We'll see how that hurts in the levels. This Golden Guardian pressuring up here. Biofrost misses the Cosmic Binding, or rather, and it looks like Doublelift was able to take a little bit of aggro from that. Yeah, I mean, this is a really good 2v2 lane here, and Closer's actually coming to set up potentially for a dive. Uh, you have the Ash Poke with the Volley, you have the Karma Q, and if you can keep landing those, uh, you can get them low enough to potentially look for that dive, but don't think that they will be going for it now that Closer has been spotted. You know, Doublelift and Biofrost are healthy enough, and Speak is actually looking for Haunter now. That's a lot of damage, Azale. He's going to get a bite in, but the shield is there. Haunter was kind of baiting out his time. Teleport's going to be down towards the bot side of the map. This is Demonte. As he takes a quick turret shot, he gets out. Was just on that minion underneath the turret to really pressure TSM back into wanting to engage on his team, and that took a lot of courage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, that was a pretty spicy play. Demonte TPing down, <laughs> uh, Broken Blade actually matching it. So uh, very interesting to see how, how it's all going to shake out as far as actually the, the CS uh, up in that top lane because Haunter, you know, should have been put at a pretty big disadvantage. You know, instead, his opponent actually had to TP away from lane, so a lot of that advantage is lost. Broken Blade luckily will be able to get back up to top side to collect this wave that he's going to push in towards him. But, you know, Haunts are not forced to actually base and TP early. He's going to be able to collect all this farm, and we'll see if Broken Blade could actually look for something like a freeze on him because uh, the wave is in a pretty awkward spot for Haunter. And, you know, mm -hmm. if we could see Spika clearing up towards the top side, which he is, um, then Haunter could be pressured, you know, into, into a poor TP or into uh, a situation where he's actually getting frozen. On, and that opens you up to a gank pretty well when you're already down on flash. Already drawing the minions a little bit here. Mm -hmm. Bro Broken Blade's like, yay, this is great. <laughs> yep, there's the TP. Because basically Mordekaiser has to come back now uh, and actually TP to break this freeze. Yeah. Speaking needs to be going up top right now, though. Uh, and he is actually clearing the Gromp. We'll see if he does run straight up towards top because I think this could easily be first blood. Uh, on to Hotzer. Yeah, I think he's just going to die. Oh, Hauntzer's back and forth. Now he realizes it's not just a 1v1. The shield comes in. Is it enough? No, Broken Blade baits him in just for a little bit more damage. Hauntzer tries to deny that as he runs to the river, and Speak is going to get first blood as they plan this one out towards the top side of the map. Yeah, that was that was well done by TSM, but but I've got to say, like that is an obvious play. Uh, I'm honestly kind of disappointed in Golden Guardians for, for not recognizing and responding yeah. more appropriately to that. Um, if Haunter wants to try to push that w that wave and sees that it's getting frozen, you know you will have to TP back into that situation. Closer needs to be there to actually escort you out, to help you push that in. You know, maybe they are, are, are willing to actually take that trade if they're saying that, hey, this is actually better for us to get Dragon. Uh, but but I kind of disagree because Haunter is actually not only giving up first blood, but he's going to lose tower plates. Mm -hmm. He's losing so much experience. And you can see on the top side, he can't even walk back up to his tower because he knows that Spika is still up there. So this is Haunter just forced to TP in, trying to break the freeze, trying to shove it in. And he does get Broken Blade very, very low, but Spika was around. Haunter had no flash. So, you know, unless TSM really misplayed this and Broken Blade, like, got too greedy for the kill himself, yeah. there was no way he was really going to escape. And the follow-up of the play is even worse. Oh, it's got the top. He has shield up. They know they can't dive him just yet. They're wait waiting for that to wear off as he builds it back up on the minions. Oh, here comes Graves and Morgana. This is going to be a big one. Might just have to be a blind binding that comes from the side. Closer's going to try to keep a little bit of vision on them as the Twisted Fate gate goes down. Bjergsen close to the turret, but just out of range. The placement <laughs> is perfect as they're able to get a kill onto Closer. Yeah, Closer must have just dashed over the wall there, but it looked like Demonte, you know, wasn't really with him. Demonte and him were roaming up together, but I'm not sure if mm -hmm. Demonte decided he was going to turn back towards mid lane or just, hey, he didn't have a way to actually get over the wall besides flashing, so he wasn't just going to flash the wall straight up. Uh, but either way, the follow-up there is actually a really big deal for TSM. You can see they're, you know, 1,400 gold ahead yeah. off of that series of events, and going to be feeling really good about that. TSM again. Now onto the bot side. Biofrost baiting out a bit of damage. FBI looking to finish that with a few more shots, and it is going to hit from the bow. He goes down, though, and a double kill for double lift. Everything is just not worth right now for Golden Guardians as they try to fight <laughs> back. TSM is saying thank you very much, picking up quite a bit. And I wanted to bring back a point where 
There was the kill top lane, but Bjergsen was going bot. A super cheeky move he did in that rotation was to throw a red card, any card, at the Drake. The Drake comes out. If Demonte would have followed him, he gets met with the objective on his rotation. I just thought that was super cheeky by Bjergsen in his rotation. Yeah, I mean, Bjergsen, you know, straight up to the top lane with the ult. Then he actually bases. He just TPs right down to this bottom lane. And Bjergsen making plays happen in two lanes within a minute or two. So really doing a good job. You know, I talked about Jeez. how that 1v1 in mid lane can be difficult, how TF wants to get out of that matchup. But, you know, Demonte has not been the one to actually have him locked under the turret. Demonte right. has been instead trying to match some of those roams. We saw him running up to top lane, trying to actually, you know, match that. Uh, in instead, it may actually just be better for the Morgana to just go for plates, right? If, if TF is going to roam, you need to be able to punish. And if you can't actually roam as fast, which you can't on the Morgana, you need to have the minion waves already cleared out. You need to be taking tower place you need to be pushing it in some other way because right now Bjergsen is running over this game and it's Demonte who has the advantageous 1v1. Also figuring out how quick you can get those spooky ghosts to get a little more control on the map will be so <laughs> so helpful. Some of these arrows may be able to come into play at that point. We're level six across the board just waiting for Biofrost right now. He's not too far off as this minion wave is going to come in. Rift Herald getting taken down by Spika on the top side as just a few more plates last on the bottom side turret. Here comes Bjergsen to help this if they feel like a dive may go in. He's here for the counter. Yep, Demonte again, you know, is kind of roaming part way down, uh, but has gone back as they spot him. They see Rift Herald getting dropped top side. Hauntzer is just going to have to say goodbye to his turret. Yeah. It's not been a very fun lane for him. Uh, been focused actually very heavily, and Bjergsen is just staying. FBI is going to die. Mm, just caught him on the cape. No capes. No capes. Now he goes down. Double lift is picking up kill after kill. Now with 150 gold bounty on his head at three and zero. And we, you talked a little bit uh, about it before in the top lane. Now Hanser was going to have a pretty free wave to farm after the TP's bot and TSM acted on that so fast to make sure mm -hmm. nothing came of him having free time up there. Yeah, I've got to say, Golden Guardians are really mishandling some of these situations, though. Like, mm -hmm. Bjergsen passed not only a pink ward that he stopped to clear on his way to bot lane. Then he actually walked by that, that Golden Guardian's ward that is over by, by Crux. So he was fully spotted with all of that happening, right? I, I yeah. don't know if Golden Guardians just, like, didn't respect the fact that he could just lane gank them with ghosts or what, but, like, they had full knowledge that Bjergsen was there. Demonte is getting a turret plate and denying farm mid. All you need to do bot lane is actually back off. Yeah. Instead, they stay around. They give over another kill pretty much for free and that has got to be like really frustrating for Demonte but just you know even for the overall squad you know that is just very disheartening like that is not a mistake you should be making just like the top lane play where you know where Hanser doesn't have cover when he has to reset the wave shouldn't be happening uh, now Hanser is actually going to try to freeze up here on the broken blade try to force broken blade into a bit of an awkward spot but you know, Broken Blade should be able to push this in, and we know the Graves just based, so he's not actually in that much danger. Yeah, it has Krugs as well to hang out for the time being, and that wave does get cleared, and it should be just in range for him to harass Hauntzer outside the turret. TPs are up for those top laners shortly for Hauntzer, and it has been a slow Drake game. This is going to be our second one of the game here, as Inferno was first. So it's Cloud or Mountain. Which one is Ale? Actually, a fight. Biofrost may not be alive to find out. And the ult goes down. We're going to switch to Mountain as it shakes the rift to change everything. And TSM get a little aggressive for that, but we'll mm -hmm. see how they can uh, recover. Yeah, not too bad, honestly, unless they lose more. You know, just right, trading right. your support for the Dragon, you're going to be pretty happy about because, you know, we talked about it early. Golden Guardians, I think, is really going to struggle later on in this game. Uh, unless they can find some really good picks with Ash or something, the side lane is going to become a problem from Bjergsen. So you just want to slow down the potential soul snowball, right? And it doesn't look like... Golden Guardians are in a position to even get plates to, to really yeah. do anything off of that. So it just ends up being Biofrost's life for the Dragon. He can call Worth on that one. Gonna need Closer to get a lot bigger at this point. He'll just be gigantic Shotgun Graves. <laughs> Hopefully come through with some damage. I feel like uh, the plays on the Lee Sin would be there here, but he's got he's got to get bigger. He's gonna have to dive into this team that's gonna be a Renekton and a Volibear. Good luck with the Bash Brothers. <laughs> Monte yeah. taking a bit of damage in front of his turret as he ices Bjergsen. Like you said, I mean, there, there's a lot more pressure on these marksmen to be doing well because Morgana mm -hmm. and Karma don't have high consistent damage. 
you know, the burst is actually pretty high from mid lane karma. If you can land the binding and, and have that W down, your ult is, is pretty high damage, but the consistent right. damage is low. Uh, you're there more for the protection, so you're going to have this Graves, who hopefully is really strong, and then Karma and Morgana are supposed to be these force multipliers, where you throw down the shield, you speed him up, you black shield him so he can't be stunned, and all of a sudden he's crushing. But if he is, you know, behind, uh, you know, <laughs> what you are multiplying is not that strong, <laughs> right? You know? Uh, <laughs> 10 times zero is still zero, so <laughs> he's got to gotta get a little bit stronger definitely at this point. <laughs> You've uh, only if, gone if from a slap to a going. fist. you got to go to Haymakers at that point. So 14 minutes on the clock. We'll see who starts throwing Haymakers first here. TSM does have a good amount of kills scattered across the team, which helps out a lot. Two kills to FBI, the only two on the team. And that's full participation from who he is. They have just been aggressed on over and over. Mm -hmm. Demontes seems to be the only one who's been able to avoid this, even trying to teleport into fights. But everybody leaves when he gets there. They don't want to give any advantage over that they have already grabbed in the side of TSM. Yep. Uh, but so far, you know, the Morgana pick, you know, hasn't hasn't really been paying dividends, right? You know, he's actually yeah. about even in farm with Bjergsen. He's actually lost more plates than Bjergsen. Bjergsen had. You know, a lot of kill participation in the side lanes. He was the one actually making many of those plays happening. So uh, he's in a great spot right now, and he's working quickly towards the Lich Bane. He has his row and Merc treads. He's sitting on the stopwatch. So uh, this has become kind of the, the standard build. We used to see sometimes players... Oh, Barbaros could be in trouble. Oh, Bio. They got Drake last time he played that aggressive. Not this, <laughs> not this time. He goes down to half HP. What is, he, got what, what is his uh, Heelys? Cosmic UFOs? I haven't yeah. made it out. I haven't played this one yet. Okay, good. Yeah, it's the Astronaut Bard. Uh, the little well, I know. It's, yeah, I just I just w didn't couldn't make out what his heel shrine was. They're aliens or something. Oh, they're aliens. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> nice binding there, though. Closer and the rest of the team going to be locked in for just a little bit. Broken Blade throws on the Dominus. How much can he dominate in this one? FBI with a beautiful flash out of that. Closer getting himself out alive. But you can see everything Golden Guardians is doing is reacting to TSM's aggression. These fights are becoming more and more unfortunate for them. Flash forward from Bjerks in the wild card. Are going to be able to finish off who he as they watch Hauntzer head for the hills. Don't have the wave for this just yet, but TSM have gained control. Yep, you can see that Spika is wrapping around behind. And they're oh actually going to continue the dive here. Just hopping right over the wall, just lumbering <laughs> towards Hauntzer. It almost didn't look that aggressive. And I think Hauntzer felt the same as he was like, okay, cool, bro. Gets out. You've already destroyed half our bot lane. DeMonte still on a mission in that mid lane. They're going to try to open up the map a little bit because a lot of these picks do work better from the fog of war. TSM can see all of Golden Guardians right now. Mm -hmm. Not many wards can be pushed forward. So maybe this opens a few windows for this hard execution comp from GG to open up. Yeah, I mean, you're, you're taking away kind of the, this bastion of safety that is the mid lane, right? Mm -hmm. You know, that mid lane tier one is so important to be able to have a place to kind of push out from to secure vision around, you know, whether you're moving towards Rift Herald, yeah. whether you're moving towards the Dragon, you know, that is a really, really important part. And it's also going to be where Aphelios is, is likely farming now, right? Because now that we're kind of through the early stages of the game, you know, TF is going to be wanting to move to the side lane. We're going to have Aphelios parked in the mid lane. And because that turret is gone, to your point, there is more of an opportunity for Golden Guard to then engage on to double lift to actually look for picks uh, where he otherwise would have been more safe farming under that turret. Rift Tail locked down. That'll be the last one we see before Baron. Speak is going to grab that. So no turret plates to grab. So most turrets are just going to take quite a bit of damage. Probably fall here in the mid lane as they mm -hmm. pressure Golden Guardians off of it. And yeah, they're going to have to take the long way around. This is really good. I mean, the dragon just spawned. You drop Shelly mid, you take down the turret. Now you have mid lane prio. Look at all the people from Golden Guardians that had to rotate back to actually answer that. Then you can just run straight over to the dragon pit and start taking that. And Golden Guardians likely won't even look to contest anymore. They don't really have any vision in this area. Damante is actually just pushing up on that top side. And you can see who he as well as closer are trying to make sure that they have some vision around this barren area, trying to clear out some of uh, the enemy vision and be behind DeMonte just in case there's any sort of engage. Setting up for what's to come. Hopefully setting up that fog of war. Like we said, getting a good pink ward coverage down, but also being able to secure those as Mountain Drake number one is picked up for TSM here. Two away from Soul is now with the map objective free for two and a half minutes. They're going to focus on bot here. 
creating a meat wall for Broken Blade, allowing that wave to come in. And second tier turrets can become pretty scary to guard, especially when you're up against the Vol of Bear. Ultimate in just a few seconds for him. Yeah, I mean, they have multiple ways to turn off uh -oh. those turrets, right? Volibear ult, Bard ult, and Broken Blade is getting engaged on. Yeah, <laughs> bit of death realm for him, but it looks like he'll stay alive throughout that process. Arrow Ooh. comes back through the uprights. It's good. TSM splits. It is, it is good. That's three, Rip. Put it on the board. <laughs> <laughs> Just eating chips. Broken Blade says thanks. <laughs> Give me some time to relax. Yep, not too much happening there uh, from Golden Guardians. <laughs> but Thumbs up. Uh, it's 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 tough, right? You are you are very reliant on the Ash engage, and y then you're kind of relying on having these pockets of vision where you're not seeing where those arrows are coming from uh, mm -hmm. to really be able to set them up. You can obviously go for the close range arrows, but the stun isn't that long then, and you know yeah. there are Merc treads on a couple members here from TSM already. Uh, plus, even if you hit someone like Volibear, that can be tough. Uh, mm -hmm. As long as Bard isn't the one actually taking the arrow, Bard can also use the Bard ultimate as, as essentially a, a peel or a Zonia's for that, right? Your right. teammate tanks an arrow, you actually ult them to deny the engage, the follow up from that arrow. Uh, and then as the Bard ultimate expires, the Ash arrow will be down and you can take the fight from there. So TSM has ways to actually deal with this and we'll see if Golden Guardians can kind of find some ways to circumvent that or, or be pretty clever about the angles that they're actually fishing for these bindings and arrows from. Speak a creeping with double lift. They've actually done quite a bit of work together. And one of the assists of the days was Spika and Double If. The Lee Sin and an Aphelios play. The Double If picked up a double kill on here under the turret. It looks like they'll try to set up one, and it's just going to be one and done on this as the duo roams around the top to meet up with Biofrost and Bjergsen. Yeah, the turrets are no safety at all. It's just a good ult there from Biofrost. And they can use the Bard ult to turn off the turret. They can use a Volibear ult to turn off the turret. You know, they just show up uh, with that Bard tunnel. Yeah. And it makes it very difficult to have any sort of safety in those side lanes, you know, especially when Bjergsen can ult in too. So many members can show up here from TSM all of a sudden. And without the turret to help buy time for the reinforcements, it's uh, very, very difficult. And yeah, I think it gets to that point now we were talking about in Champion Select where this comp had to be used quite early. I think even if you started throwing some karma abilities at TSM's front line, they would still run at you happily and not take <laughs> too much damage. You know, I, yeah. I figured through this game, we'd see a lot more Dark Bindings just being thrown at the groups at objectives, but they haven't been able to meet TSM at objectives. TSM hasn't grouped for Golden Guardians there. They're kind of just teleporting wherever that fight's going to be, skirmishing and continuing to take more control of the map. Golden Guardians. Yeah, I mean, that, that's one of the problems when you don't have strong side lane, right? You know, when mm -hmm. you don't actually handle that top lane 1v1 properly, the Mordekaiser is likely the one you wanted answering, you know, TF and, and Renekton right, the side lanes right. anyway. Uh, so he is behind. Uh, and then you're always going to be pushed in. Like, look where Bjergsen is. They want to set up for this dragon, but someone's going to go have to answer Bjergsen. Someone's going to have to answer this Renekton. So then you get multiple members pulled out of place. And as you send people up to Bjergsen, you know that Bjergsen can ult over to your other teammates. Exactly. So everyone has to back off. And when everyone backs off from Golden Guardians, guess what happens? You lose all your vision. Look where Biofrost is. Look where this three-man squad of jungle and bot lane is. Because they know that Bjergsen could come, they're actually invading this blue side and just taking away all the wards. And they're actually a mantra up Soul Flare going in. Spika takes about 100 damage from that one. Arrow's going to go in. Might just disable the turret out of range as he uses the ultimate to jump around. A bit of a good engage here from Golden Guardians. They get the size up TSM for some damage, and here come the bindings from Demonte. But overall, the damage traded back oh. just from the wild cards as they drop double lift immediately with some follow up from Closer. And this is what we were waiting for Golden Guardians to do is to gather together, use these skill shots. Maybe a TP coming in from Haunter as he gets to the fountain just now to look for the team. And it looks like they're all calling comms off so he can get top lane pushed, and they use this time to get some yeah. map control. I really want to see that again, because that looked like Doublelift maybe got hit by a binding and just sat it. He had cleanse available, and you really do have to respect the W damage of Morgana, especially as a mid laner when you have a yeah. lot of AP. You, know, you, you max a W, it does actually an incredible amount of damage. Uh, the binding is key to hit, because otherwise you just walk out of it, obviously. Um, but it, it did look to me like maybe Doublelift got t tagged by a binding and thought, hey, I can just sit through this, um, not really respecting that Morgana damage. And it does end up paying for it. But thankfully for him, he is respawning. The dragon is up. He has the sum. So Ooh. TSM not going to be punished too much. They want to fight right now. Get the skirmish in. Closer's all about that. Demonte's going to try to gain brush control here. And rinse and repeat. Is able right back at it. A mountain Just look drake. Look at that damage. 
coming in for Golden Guardians or a third here for TSM. Everybody's getting whittled away, but nothing to really change their tide in the fight just yet. Broken Blade now throwing down Dominus, trying to get a little bit of a heal back from Call the Meek, but he's whacked down by Haunts, or that's the Aphelios ultimate coming in with Crescendum. So he's got the Spectral Chakram stacked up. He just has to get in melee range. Bjergsen's gonna be doing that himself in a 2v1 here in front of the turret as he takes a quick shot. And these fights are so scattered, but I feel like they are favoring TSM a bit. Golden Guardians, however, is goal side to that Drake, and it looks like they'll have the positioning without Broken Blade for TSM. Yeah, I mean, with, with Broken Blade going down, that one definitely went in the favor of Golden Guardians. You know, Haunter yep. started to actually win out in that 1v1, and because of Broken Blade's positioning, you know, it was more Golden Guardians that were yeah. kind of on top of that Death Realm. You know, oftentimes when you're in that 1v1, a lot of it is about the posturing. Like, can your team actually push forward in that 4v4 to take control of the area that those mm -hmm. kind of combatants are in in the Death Realm? Uh, and it was actually Golden Guardians that were able to help out more. You know, as Broken Blade came out of the Death Realm, he gets hit by the ultimate from Closer, he gets hit by some other little spells and ends up yep. falling down, which grants them the dragon. So here's, here's the that play. earlier play. We're going to see what exactly did happen to Double Lift because you know, he was fully stacked on, on overheal here. Was it actually a binding? So yeah, hit with the slow, hit with the binding. You just need to cleanse that. I mean, he just sits through this and look how much damage he actually does tank, you know, not realizing quite how much it's going to be because as you get lower, the Morgana W does more damage. So he got hit by the Mantra Q. That wasn't blocked. The volley wasn't blocked. So uh, to be fair to Double Lift, you know, maybe he was expecting, hey, Broken Blade or Spica is going to tank this. And if they tank the Mantra or that volley, uh, then he would have survived. So, you know, either way, a mistake from someone uh, kind of just depends on, on how you want to <laughs> play it, right? Absolutely. Should have been a tempered fate all the way. Ah, there you uh, go. <laughs> it's the support's fault. That's, that's exactly. The, that's, you know, everyone can usually agree on that. It's the support's fault. <laughs> Oh, man. Broken Blade getting a bit of a reset here as he pushes the wave past River. Now it will be pushing towards Golden Guardians for a moment here as it piles up with just one more wave to help it. To the mid lane here for TSM. Golden Guardians doing a very nice job at finding the skirmishes that are allowing mm -hmm. the kills. Not an ace on TSM. Not fully taking out TSM's team. Just taking one member out and Golden Guardians knowing they have enough advantage to start controlling more. I think that's super smart, not getting ahead of yourself and saying this is when it has to be done. They are really working within their bounds of being behind. Yeah, yeah, I mean, they've done a good job playing from behind and, and you know, and, and to their credit and to kind of the strengths of the team. You know, while they don't have good engage, they have really good kite. It's very difficult, you yeah. know, for the Renekton, for this Follow Bear to just jump straight in because, you know, you're going to get those Karma Shields, you're going to get the Black Shield on the main target, and they can kind of kite backwards. So, uh, you know, how they play these fights out is very important. But if TSM is, is kind of playing as, as I think they should, which is really just committing to the 1-3-1, one, one, you know, parking your, your bot lane and your jungle in mid lane and just farming waves, then the lack of engage becomes very, very problematic, right? Yeah. Because Aphelios has tons of wave clear. You have the safety, you know, of the Bartle for the disengage. You know, Spika can kind of tank any of those, those skill shots as well. And you just don't really have great side lane answers uh, to be able to kind of match TF and Renekton right now. What a turnaround here for Golden Guardians. Seems like they, they have that confidence and just the trust in each other to come from behind in an instance, knowing mm -hmm. the composition will work at a different time or it hasn't come online yet. And I think that is a huge attribute to have throughout a team. I mean, nobody's going to oh, surrender. No go. one's going to give up, but you got to keep your eye on the prize. And here, losing a bit of vision on the map. Golden Guardians may lose DeMonte, and they do. He goes down for the first time this game after being quite safe. Yeah, he has been playing it safe, but slow on the Black Shield there. He actually gets hit by that yeah. Cosmic Binding, you know, bound up. Not sure how much it would have mattered. You know, maybe if you actually don't get hit by the Binding there, you know, you can use your Super Zoker or something, slow them down. I'm not sure if that was on cooldown uh, and maybe flash out. Either way, easy pick there from TSM. And they already had pressure down in that bottom lane. So now they're pressuring mid and top. They're looking to try to bounce between these two waves, threaten dives if Golden Guardian sends too many members to one side or the other. And with this TF with Lich Bane, you just crush through that turret. Straight to bot. Already going down. Broken Blade's trying to push through on the Haunter. Dominus is there. And he just says, thank you very much for this room. We will now back up into a dragon position as we get some wards set up here. Golden Guardians trying to get there first. Ooh. Have the upper hand. 
DeMonte's trying to shut a few down. Throws down the Ghosts, and he throws out the Super Soaker as they drop Spica right away. No jungler for the Drake in 40 seconds, and it's the exact time for Spica to spawn. Yeah, I wonder if they actually try to make a risky play and go towards the Baron. Doesn't seem like it, as they are just taking a scuttle still. But that was a yeah. bold teleport from DeMonte. TSM a little bit too slow to actually get out of there. DeMonte realizes that there is a timing window for him to just teleport in. They do end up getting one pick, but it could have potentially been even more. And uh, we are seeing you know, how, how they can have opportunities to fight back. You know, the, the pick on the double lift in the bot lane, the kill on Broken Blade over by the previous dragon. This is actually putting them at their third dragon now. You know, TSM with a couple mistakes and Golden Guardians with a couple yeah. good punishes is putting them at soul point. And that's where, that's where it starts to get a little bit more concerning. They're looking at double lift, a five and one, two, almost full item. He is made to carry this game on that Aphelios. Mm -hmm. Only went down the one time and just a little lapse of judgment we saw with the binding from DeMonte. And that was the fog of war they were working. Not able to set too much of that up on the side of Golden Guardians right now as TSM is snuffing that vision out and setting up their own security towards Baron. This is going to be the tough one. TSM has kind of led the they fights once they fast. started it. And yeah, they can just destroy this. So Golden Guardians is going to have to come up with a very big plan here unless they just try to rebuttal. Yep, they are looking like they want to come and try to fight this, but their bottom lane is, you know, still kind of a bit farther away. Uh, FBI now arriving, Demonte almost there, so TSM will pull off. Uh, TSM just needs to get back into their one through one You know, we've seen every time they get the proper setup for the one through one okay. it goes great for them, right? You know, they, they get in the one through one they get a pick on Demonte, they take multiple towers down, they're rotating around the map. You know, that is how you are going to close this game. That is how you are going to peel Golden Guardians apart. Uh, TSM, when they make mistakes, can't just like falter and say, all right, well, we got to fight them, I guess. I guess, you know, because that is really how uh, Golden Guardians has an opportunity to win. Starting to synergize a few of those items, too. A lot of the Glacial Augments from DeMonte mm -hmm. now being caught up on by that Shirelias from Huhi, so they can synergize a little bit more, help each other out. Quickly onto Bjergsen. Can they take him down immediately? Look at that damage he was able to dish out and double lift with a double kill as he moves to seven and one on this game. Bjergsen with the snap judgment to go for both Closer and DeMonte. Yeah, just a really good call. I mean, they can move around the map better than their opponents. That's what you're drafting Always. for. That's what you need to be looking for. You have the Bart. You have the TF. They're able to find DeMonte. This time, Closer was trailing him because he was thinking, okay, if one or two people come, we can actually look for a 2v2 or I can prevent this kill. Instead, it's four members of TSM showing up, and they just pile drive them down. They will get those kills. They will get the Baron. And now with this Baron-empowered split push game, that TSM is going to be looking to play, it gets so, so hard for Golden Guardians. It's really going to be all about, can you take this Mountain Dragon for them? And even if you can get it, it doesn't guarantee you a win because you can still play towards that split push. So Biofrost was spotted. They saw Spica coming up. Um, this is something where it just feels like Golden Guardians, you know, now given that I see on the replay, they, they had some vision. They had some idea of where TSM mm -hmm. could be. It just feels a little bit greedy trying to actually push out that wave. You know, maybe... Uh, DeMonte was actually close to a, a good buy, or maybe they felt like, hey, we really need to get this, this wave out a little bit further so we can set up more on the bottom side or something. But uh, when you are not respecting the TF, you will get punished very heavily. Bjergsen is, is 16, so he has enormous range on that ult. The cooldown is very short, and you've got to play yeah. out with respect to, to where he can be. Kind of just denies your vision game, too. <laughs> You're like, they can't see it. Oh, okay, that's fine. Eye in the sky. Spooky ghosts. Just going over and tapping Spica. He'll be fine. And they know Bard is somewhere close. Journeyed yep. off into the distance. But Golden Guardians now losing a bit of control of where they are on the map here as TSM is going to start pushing their base. Yep, getting split out again. You know, this is 3 1 1, same thing. Uh, you have the solo laners by themselves. You have this three man squad splitting up. Uh, this time they actually went for the arrow on double lift. They actually hit double lift with an arrow, but not only does he have cleanse, he has mercurial too. So he drops the mercurial. He's still not really in danger because he has cleanse in his back pocket as well. And they're going to get pushed in on all sides. Bjergsen needs to get that mid wave going so they can really pressure from multiple angles. So that's when TSM is going to start having opportunities. So Golden Guardians is going to have to choose their moment to actually look for a potential hard engage. Or as Bjergsen gets this mid lane wave up, uh, they may potentially be losing inhibitor towers. Slick little grab in there from Hanser to pull the cannon minions to the turret aggro. But it's only getting harder. Closer was there hoping. Broken Blade committed just a little bit more, but TSM knows the line they're walking right now. It's not actually that hard to cross. 
They just know they can't give up any silly kills. They are so far ahead at this point. 8,000 gold in the lead. And here, one inhibitor turret is down as they start working on the mid lane. They go back to the 131 one Azale. They were, they were feeling it too. They knew it was what worked, so they had to reinstate it. Because the bot lane is your last inhibitor turret. We're still waiting for one of the inhibs to fall so they can start working the minions in. It, it, it gets a little easier for Golden Guardians to hit the bindings, hit the skill shots here, but it may be too late to do any impactful damage to turn TSM away. They get out with half an inhibitor. Bjergsen's going to stay top, and they are just giving Golden Guardians so much to think about right now. Yeah, I mean, it's just don't have enough members to actually answer. Yeah. They lost all three inhibitor towers. That's what happens when you're behind and your opponents get barren. You know, TSM just didn't press too hard. Now it's going to be FBI looking for the engage, but it's on Spica. Who cares? He backs off. Does have to ult. They don't have too many turrets out here that they even need to take away, though. Looking for the Ranger's focus from FBI, but he's got to get close. Activates it on. Volley's out as they're trying to get the tags on the they're crowd base. control. But they are losing their base. As everybody looks at the rest of TSM, Bjergsen is in the mid lane. And he's able to help take down Nexus turret number one as the team is a distraction. Yeah, TSM needs to be careful that they don't get over aggressive here, though. You want to retreat, take out this dragon, deny that soul potentially. Uh, uh. I am amazed. Buff has expired. A Karma Ash team is getting kited out right now. <laughs> that blows I mean, my mind. Their engage just sucks. They, you you yeah. have you have the Ash arrow, but that's it. Like the, the key yeah. target is double lift, and he has cleanse plus Mercurial. Like, what are you gonna do? You you hit Spica. Uh, it just doesn't really matter. You know, even if Spica dies in that situation, the most you can hope for is maybe pushing out for the dragon. But if you send right. two people to the dragon, then you lose the game because TF just kills your Nexus. So. Uh, you know, Golden <laughs> Guardians have kind of just drafted themselves into a corner. They've they've got to try to hit an arrow on like a miracle target, but there's even a QSS on Broken Blade, so it's like I guess you're hoping you hit Bjergsen and somehow kill him before he can zone yeah. is, right? Like, you know, what are your, what are your chances of that happening when he has summoners available and you know also has a decent bit of HP from the Roa, plus he has tenacity from the Merc Tread. So I just don't think that Golden Guardians have, have given themselves many options to do things mm -hmm. in the late game as long as TSM is playing it properly and in this last couple of minutes they have been, which right. is why we're kind of in this spot. And, and we look at uh, kind of what we were tracking coming into the game and is that flexibility there, is the identity for TSM there. And they, they seem to be kind of playing a bit of everything now. The TF, again, for Bjergsen being a new one mm -hmm. in the summer. Again, he always plays it. But just being able to change things up and not look out of sorts until playoff time comes and they really buckle down. Here, an arrow coming into Spica. Again, the engage onto the tank. Even though he's caught far out, it does not mean he is caught out. They will re-engage. Once again, the Crescentum goes out. The Spectrum Chakram, Spectral Chakram start to fly. And Double if takes down FBI. 8-1-0 and zero here. Speak is having a hard time, but it doesn't even matter. Haunts are just wanting to get one in the KDA column. And they are going to take down the Nexus. TSM takes down Golden Guardians. <laughs> yeah, they couldn't even kill Speak off. Hanser was committed. He wanted the jungle kill.